Hey everyone, welcome back. So today is Monday, the markets are down. Bitcoin is actually up for today, but it's down now uh, on the new day. And we got some hive news. We have some back and forth between uh, Willie Wu and Mr. Peter Brandt. So we'll discuss that a little bit and I think we'll call it a day. Not much going on, so we'll keep it pretty fast and quick. All right, so let's get into the charts here. So Bitcoin right now is at 46,887. It obviously, we had the uh, death cross happen here overnight, or yesterday basically, where the 50 day here crossed the 200 day moving average, and we are just awaiting, I'm actually awaiting a, a fall. I'm looking forward to fall. Who knows if it's gonna happen, but typically when you get the death cross, you end up falling in price. So I'm looking to see if it will possibly fall to 44,780, right around there, and then we'll see if it can, contain support there. If not, I'm thinking it's going to fall down to like 40,000 possibly, or I could be surprised completely and we could possibly just fall to the 47,000 mark roughly or 44,700 and possibly go back up. Uh, time will only tell. But I'm not a fortune teller or anything like that, so I can't tell the future. What's going to happen? We can only look at the charts and see on the daily what's going on with it and get some maybe other perspectives from other people that watch the chain analytics and things like that. So we'll keep an eye on this, see what happens with that. Ethereum on the other hand is, was also up yesterday. It is still, you know, hugging that support line or now resistance line at 3,961. We'll have to see how this plays out as well. It was obviously had a, a fell today and then came back up just like Bitcoin did. But it is now obviously trend, trending a little bit lower here. It is still above the 200 day moving average. We did get the cross on the 20 and the 50 day moving averages here about a week ago. And we'll just have to see how this plays out. We'll have to see what the next support is, possibly if it falls below it. I mean, there really isn't anything other than maybe the 3,780 mark right around here. We got a couple lines that have touched here. And let's see if we can match it up with something down here. So yeah, if we look here, we got one here and we got one here as well. So that might be our support. Going forward, we also have this line potentially right around here at the 3,500, yeah, 3,580 mark. So we'll keep an eye on it, see what happens with it. But Bitcoin has been doing better than, uh, or Ethereum has been doing better than Bitcoin in the last couple of weeks as far as price declines and being more steady in price as compared to Bitcoin. Um, let's take a look at the miners here really quick and then we'll get into the news. So the miners, the only news that I saw today was obviously Hive was going to be doing their um, investor conference call tomorrow to talk about their plans for 2022. We'll cover that a little bit here as well. So DMG was actually up today 1.71% to 6173. I checked all the institutional and stuff like that, um, the analysts already to see if there's anything changes on that and all these guys and there wasn't anything. Uh, looked for any Corporate actions as far as insider activity, nothing new was reported on any of these guys as well. So there's nothing to report on that part. Uh, news, same thing. There's some news here on Riot, but it's basically just a commentary piece by some um, outlet. So Riot was down today, three, another 3% 3 to 2252. Mawson was down as well. Mawson was actually down quite a bit. It was down 15.87%, which obviously we've had a six days of gains and it obviously fell down today so that could be contributed to a potential pump and dump thing going on we covered why Mawson was going up in another video on that if you want to check it out that should be in the playlist but basically there was nothing that was supposed to be an impact on the stock price but the stock price was going up anyways but there was a story and a tweet that could have been pumping it uh, higher and obviously it's correcting right now which is kind of a relief because I was wondering if it's going to continue going up or not. So it's kind of a relief that it's going down a little bit back to where the norm should be along with the other miners. So they were down quite a bit. Let's see here. Mara was also down 4% to 3247. No news from them. Hut 8, same thing, was down 3.72% to 751. I mean, you can continue, you know, kind of see this trend line here. We're just going down continually. Uh, so. We'll have to keep an eye on all these guys here. Digihost was down as well, 0.84% to 353. Hive was down as well to another 3.47%, down to 250. 
And then CleanSpark was down another 7.6% to 1082. And BitFarms was down as well at 381%, down to 455. So obviously all of these miners are going down and I think it's because, well, I know it's because Bitcoin is going down. As far as when Bitcoin's gonna go back up, we really don't know. It's just when that change happens from people being bullish to, from people being bearish to people being bullish on Bitcoin itself, that will trigger obviously these guys to go up as well. And that could be within the next day, <clears throat> excuse me, next day, or it could be within a week, two weeks, could be not until the first of the year when all this possible selling is going on, possibly for tax loss harvesting. And just the micro, micro, I think it's a micro, microeconomics going on with the virus and other things like that where people are afraid of what's going to happen with the economy. So that is that. Uh, let's take a look at really quick here, the news on Hive. So we'll get into Hive here. So Hive blockchain is going to provide corporate update and results from their 2021 annual general meeting. In it, they are going to do that tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. So Hive announces that management will host a webcast on Tuesday, December 21st, 2021 at 4 p.m. Eastern time to provide corporate update and announce results from its 2021 annual general meeting of shareholders. Among the discussion topics will be an update on Hive's upgrades to its facilities in Iceland and Sweden. We urge investors to sign up today and participate in the webcast. Um, and then you can obviously click here to register for the meeting. I doubt that I will have the time to listen in on this. But if any of you guys are listening on this, I don't know if you can provide, uh, ask questions or not. But one of the things I would want to ask is, are they going to do anything with immersion cooling with their systems, with their uh, basically facilities? That would be interesting to know. And do they have any plans for further uh, capital raising, which would possibly result in shareholder dilution? Those are the questions that I would ask. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, Emergent Cooling was one of them. Obviously, shareholder dilution was the other one. And what is their plan for basically purchasing more miners? Basically, um, you know, that's the big thing in everybody's mind is obviously the more hash rate that you have, the stock price gets better from that. So that's all I would have there. All right. And then we got Willy Woo against Peter Brandt. Going at it on Twitter. So this is an article from Cointelegraph. The, um, title, Don't Expect Retail Sell-Off to Crash Bitcoin Price Analyst. So high volume candles associated with Bitcoin price dips already occurred on der derivatives exchanges this time around, Willy Woo notes. And those expecting another Bitcoin speculative price dip are looking in the wrong place. One of the industry's best known analysts suggested, well, Willy Woo. In a Twitter discussion on December 20th, which is today, Willy Woo, creator of on-chain data resources, Woo Bull, said the popular retail exchanges will not spark a further BTC price route. So that is actually very interesting because we have the death cross on Bitcoin right now. So if he's thinking that, based on what he's seeing at least, that the price won't go too much further lower and we may actually be going back up, that is that is a positive, right? So that's a good thing. So that would be, that would be nice to see. Um, but U.S. retail stays calm through the route. Wu was debating the odds of fresh downside with veteran trader Peter Brandt, a common commentator revered for calling Bitcoin price bottoms in recent years. Brandt argued that volume spikes that accompany price crashes have been absent in December versus previous episodes. As such, the real cap capitulation phase is not yet, to, uh, not yet to occur. So what he's talking about there is you usually have these big, big uh, huge spikes in volume um, accompanying uh, price, huge price decreases. And he's saying that he hasn't seen this yet. Obviously, we had a huge spike downwards on it. If we look at the chart here really quick, we'll be able to show you that on one of the days. And this was back in, we had obviously pretty big volume here. We hit, let me see if I can get the volume on it. I don't show the volume right here, volume. But we saw this big wick going down to about the 30, well, that's on Ethereum, sorry. Here it is. So here's that huge wick down on Bitcoin. This was on December 4th. We went down all the way down to 42,300 something roughly. Then we came back up above it and we obviously had a huge uh, volume spike here as well. So that's kind of what they're talking about here. If we go back to the article. So that was 
Brand arguing about its responding will argue that speculative derivatives traders had been featured in the Cascade to 41,800 earlier this month, which is what we just showed, while retail investors continue to hold BTC. As such, volume data from Coinbase or other retail platforms does not serve as a suitable indicator for an imminent dip. So that's a Coinbase chart. Sell pressure has been from deleveraging on future markets, also from on Asia, Asian spot exchanges, he wrote. Overall, no sign yet of on-chain sell-off. Hodlers hodling. Uh, speculative investors took profits, effectively a consolidation under weak December liquidity. So that would be interesting. It would be actually very good news for us if that's the case, where hopefully we won't get a, another crash going on to 40,000. Uh, Peter Brandt was his tweet here. Implications of volume, key bottoms in BTC have occurred with high volume panic capitulations that has yet to happen. Thoughts. So this is what he's talking about here. Huge volumes. We had, you know, compared to these, I mean, we had a volume here, maybe, maybe that's what he's talking about here, but obviously it wasn't as high as the previous ones here. So we'll see who's right, whether Willie Wu is right or Peter Brandt. Um, only time will tell, obviously. Unfortunately, that's the only thing that we can go by on that. Um, sorry about that to clear my throat a little bit. Speaking too much here. Um, I think that's it. There's not much else going on. Um, it's kind of slow. Obviously, this is the week before Christmas, so it's going to be a slow week with trading and everything else. And I'm probably not going to get a lot of news out there, so we'll try and find some good information for you guys to uh, tackle and things like that. But that's all I got for you guys. Have a great evening. See you guys probably in a video tomorrow. Um, obviously, if you enjoy these, these videos, please subscribe. If you haven't already, uh, hit the like button and the notification bell. Helps me out tremendously. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then.